the designer would continue. But carry on he did. And in this, his 30th anniversary year, Yves Saint Laurent can celebrate still being at the top and having secured a place in fashion history. Virtual love-in at the Opera Bastille in Paris, where a crowd of 2,800 came to pay tribute to the man who still called the king of fashion. Besides the hundreds of Yves Saint Laurent employees, there were the famous faces who have been loyal friends and clients over the past 30 years. The anniversary extravaganza also included seldom-seen film footage and a parade of 100 models wearing evening clothes from various stages of his career. It's a symbol of a man's work in a way that is unique and pure, and it shows the visionary quality. It shows that he has suffered to give women something that's unique. Fame came early to Saint Laurent. Born in Algeria 55 years ago, he was 19 when Christian Dior hired him to be his main assistant. Two years later, Dior was dead, and Saint Laurent named head designer of what was the most successful couture house of that time. In 1960, Saint Laurent suffered a nervous collapse after being called up to serve in the French army. After being released from a military hospital, he discovered Dior had replaced him. So the designer and his friend, Pierre Berger, made plans to open their own couture house in 1962. I remember the first day, with uh, so many people, it was so crowded in the house. Everybody was there, in the, in the press, and the buyers, professional buyers, and uh, private clients, and uh, it was incredible. Did you know that it would become this? Yes. I never died. Okay. Berger is the one who makes sure Saint Laurent gets what he wants. He's also managed to guide their business into one with sales in the billion dollar range. What is important in a fashion business, it is not a businessman. The businessmen are important, of course, but first you have to find a fashion designer. And you know there are many, many businessmen, but very few fashion designers. The success of Saint Laurent is credited to his ability to reflect the mood of the time into his clothing, thereby influencing what women would wear, whether it was the sexual liberation of the 60s or making it fashionable for women to wear pants to the office. I think Yves, uh, with uh, before him Chanel, is uh, the most influential designer in the world. My first memory of him is actually not of him, but of a photograph that I saw, I guess, in French Vogue of Betty Catrou wearing the first see-through um, blouse, you know, with a smoking jacket over it. I was very young, and I wanted to, uh, this dress to go uh, to a presentation to the, to the Queen in, in London. And uh, it was a very beautiful Russian-style dress, white crepe and completely embroidered in red like a child. It was so pure and so beautiful. Saint Laurent will or can continue depends on him and on his health. Some say his influence is on the wane, while others compare him to the eternal phoenix. Sometimes he goes sort of and he sort of rumples around in the ashes for a bit and then he comes up absolutely splendid, does miraculous collections. He's still 
king of fashion. <laughs> and I'll be coming to see his collections as long as he does them. And I think a lot of people will come as long as he continues to, to show. We'll all be here.